Hey guys, it's Mathel here once again, and my next build that I've decided to try is revolving around the Void Fletcher Quiver. As you can see in these little clips here, the big ass sort of void explosion, which you can evidently build around these days. My last character that I did for bows was the Scourge Arrow Trickster, and in that character I did try out the Void Fletcher uh, to see what it was like, and it definitely looked like something you could really beef up and play around, so I wanted to wait until I'd made a pure character for the Void Fletcher to actually put it to use rather than shove it in that character, though I think you can put it into just about most bow characters and get some decent use out of it. However, the correct way of building around it is to basically try and stack as many arrows as possible because each and every additional arrow has its own damage range and it will be exploding every single arrow and doing each source of damage um, collectively to the boss in what is technically or basically shotgunning and overlapping damage which is something that well shouldn't really exist but it still does in some sorts of cases um, in some niche uses so the idea here is to stack many arrows with death uh, death's opus using dying sun and as well as that the dead eye ascendancy endless munitions so we have in total five additional arrows shooting out six void shots every single attack um, so primarily with my ice shot when I'm just attacking, you can see there is a secondary void shot that is um, taking like half a second to explode. So it usually doesn't actually help uh, on clear too much. But once you come across these bosses, it does quite a lot of extra damage. And you can also have, like I have in my setup, a barrage to unload all of your extra stacks at once because it will fire off uh, as many of the void shots as arrows you fire out from the barrage and it is an easy way to just unload all of your burst damage at one time since you usually uh, have five stacks of void shot ready to go. So currently in this entire video I don't even have barrage linked to anything it is just a one link and a lot of the time I'm just placing my uh, void shot next to the um, bosses rather than hitting them with my barrage just to emphasize the point of how much the uh, void shot itself is doing to carry the damage here. So the barrage itself shouldn't really be doing too much damage, at least not yet, because I don't have any links attached to it. And the void shot, um, six arrows, then stacked up five times is 30 arrows or 30 void shots all at once exploding, dealing a fuck ton of damage and it's a huge amount of extra burst without really requiring too much in the uh, damage scaling category. Whereas traditionally barrage requires lots of damage scaling and then as well as that, the additional arrow scaling too. And then basically for your clear skill, you choose whatever you really want. I went with ice shot because uh, I think it's a pretty fun clear skill and um, don't really just want to do some more generic tornado shotting. Uh, and Tornado Shot really does uh, thrive from having the Helm Enchant, which I definitely wasn't going to be buying. So it was just kind of a uh, fun budget graphical setup with the Ice Shots going off uh, with Fork or Chain, lots of additional arrows so you don't have to use GMP in that one, and then Barrage currently not linked just to add huge amounts of extra burst when unleash unleashing all of our Void Shots. Now quite likely by the end of the setup I will link up Barrage as well just so that you can um, get even bigger, fatter, chunkier end game clear. But um, the biggest challenge is trying to fit in um, a lot of life into the build with a lot of no life items. So the Hyrie's Ire chest is a huge damage gain and you pretty much have to use it. It's kind of a no brainer. And then on top of that, you ha have to use the Void Shot or the Void Fletcher Quiver itself, which has no life as well. So you're starting off on a pretty weak footing for life based builds and especially being on the um, lower down dexterity side of the tree you can't get all that much life so once my character's all said and done it's probably going to have about 55 5600 life which is nothing special uh, in today's end game circumstances but the fact is you're a very mobile evasive character that can one shot most things so dying really doesn't happen very often with this type of a setup so it's probably going to end up being somewhat um, 
resilient is the word we'll use, even though the numbers don't really look like they're going to make it that way. However, I think it should be more than enough to get something like 5,500 life. However, of course, you can build a lot more, but uh, the primary method of damage stacking here is getting abyssal jewels with life and a bit of additional damage, and then working off of the Hyrie's Ire additional cold damage as well. So it's kind of got a... Um, Nice little entry point where you just need a Void Fletcher and a High Resire, maybe a Death Sopus or an Arborix, but you can min max it to sh all shit and just one shot every single endgame boss out there. So for now, let me jump into what the character looks like. So here is our current character, level 89, Shaper's Gaping Void. This was a ranger that I started leveling the other day from level 1 to 80 in one stream, took like 10 hours or something. It was a pretty quick leveling process and it was just a long, fun stream. And it is built around this um, quiver called Void Fletcher. Now, it was um, something that was not too impressive when it first came out, but it did receive a very large buff um, at the start of last league for Betrayal, I do believe. And uh, that made it just do more damage, have a better area, better trigger time, and better recharge time, I believe. So when you're actually out in the wild, uh, your five max void charges stack up pretty damn quickly, and then you can unleash them every single time you use any sort of attack. And like I said, with Barrage, it unleashes all of them at once. Now something that is relevant is actually the noise of the entire thing because there is a lot of visual noise but there's also a lot of um, sort of audio that comes with this skill so it's pretty um, necessary for you to hear that if you're going to jump into it because especially once you actually hit a, a boss with this skill it amplifies the bass even further. So when you shoot just one time that's just a few of our arrows going out right? And uh, it's got some pretty deep bass to it. If you shoot with your barrage and your dying sun up, it shoots out, like I said, something about 30 arrows or so. And it has a very thick noise associated with it. So once you um, actually hit a boss, I'm not sure I'll be able to hit maybe something like that. But once you actually hit a boss with all of your arrows, it makes a huge chunking thud. And that can either be extremely satisfying or extremely annoying, depending on how you actually enjoy the um, noise of it all. But beyond that, there's nothing too complicated about the character at the moment. It's just trying to stack your um, cold damage. Can be lightning, can be fire. Uh, but cold seems to be the most efficient, especially when it starts out with some cold. And High Resire itself has a bunch of cold too. So uh, we're stacking cold damage as well as some physical and then converted to cold. But it is going to be largely just flat cold damage that is um, going to be giving us all of our damage. So you try and get some arrows, you try and stack some cold damage. In the end, we have two arrows here. We have two arrows from Dying Sun and one arrow from Endless Munitions. Scion can get the exact same, but after playing around with it, um, if you can get the other avenues like a Dying Sun and um, a Death's Opus or an Arborix, then I don't think it's really necessary to play Deadeye. So you could definitely make a Trickster very solid into one of these or any other Ascendancy, um, as well as, of course, Scion for the Additional arrow, but I think the main staple of a uh, two here and then two here is going to be enough to get this sort of completely rolling. But I really like the idea of getting an additional arrow here as well as area because um, the area does also scale off of um, increased um, percentages so that it gets bigger and the overlaps are easier to hit on a single target. And besides that, of course, you do have Tailwind. Um, fast and deadly, which is huge quality of life for your blinking. So um, it's just a very nice ascendancy for the bow characters, of course, still. And uh, besides that, like I said, nothing too special. You're just using a Death's Opus, which is a bunch of physical, some good crit multi, but mostly the additional arrows. And we are converting a lot of our damage um, over here, for example. Uh, so the Ice Shot itself is 100% cold. The Barrage doesn't really do much damage at the moment, but it will be 40% cold at this point, and then a bunch of stacking of cold. So it's not too important that it's not fully converted, but it's not linked to anything at the moment. It's just sitting there and is entirely um, a void shot uh, sort of facilitator, though I will probably link it up and give it some actual damage too. And um, then you're using Tomb Fist just for the Intimidate and an additional um, jewel. So that's probably the maximum damage you can still get for a glove slot, though we could possibly do better. Um, 
with some other glove, but two socket tomb fists certainly can't be beat at this point. Uh, life resist on um, boots. Got crown of the tyrant. This is a helm that drops off of all, which is um, a decent little damage boost, but ultimately um, it's really not that worth it. It's a bit of extra damage when you have a green socket and then the minus res to everything around you. However, if I was to just craft a helmet um, with pristine and frigid fossils, you'd have the same sort of result, life and minus cold, but you wouldn't have the additional little bit of cold, which I don't think is super important because right now I do kind of need resists, but I wanted to grab this helm and play around with it for the first time ever. So fuck it, I did it. Even if it's maybe not uh, max efficiency, it's a decent choice but um, I think you're better off getting a couple of resists or at least one resist on a helm with frigid and pristine crafts. Uh, you then get an amulet that has some elemental damage, some multi, maybe some cold damage. This is currently what I'm running with. Uh, craft an assassin mark ring can do a bit better and I might end up multi-modding something like this. And then mark of the elder is a huge damage increase as well. And of course I'm currently just using a string of servitude to fill out my resists uh, before figuring out the rest of my sort of resist balance because uh, currently it's doing quite a lot. I've leveled with it from level one and I haven't yet taken it off because uh, I mean this life title is not great but it hasn't really gotten me in trouble yet. So once I start tackling the uh, proper end game is once um, I'm going to have to upgrade and try and get 5500 life or so. The current links for ice shot are ice shot, added cold damage, elemental damage with attacks, Fork and Mirage Archer. Uh, fork, by no means necessary. You can get away with no forking. You can get away with using Chain. Chain might even be better. Um, if you're gonna use Pierce though, you probably just wanna use the Threshold Jewel in one of your um, sockets, because uh, that basically gives you Pierce and means you don't have to actually spec into it. And uh, everything else is pretty basic. So we do have Herald of Ice, Hatred, running a War Banner, and um, just a few abyssal jewels for some damage currently this one has lightning cold fire not ideal but it's what i've got um this one over here has um cold fire life and uh that's one i crafted myself actually i think i crafted all of these myself and then a bit of cold lightning and um once again life so they're not insane but uh they're not cheap to buy so i do go ahead and craft these all myself usually and it is the bulk of your damage aside from of course the Hyrie's Ire itself which is an added cold damage gem all by itself. So it's pretty hard to not use this especially when it gives you a lot of evasion and uh, dodge as well it's kind of a no-brainer but I was trying to craft a elder chest um, with crit and life and uh, it's gonna be pretty expensive to get a good one of those one that's competitive with a Hyrie's Ire anyway um, so yeah it's not very realistic to do so. Uh, but yeah, that's basically the build. There's not really much else to say. We got ourselves in a series promise, but most of the time I'm running a silver flask just with uh, immune to curses so that you can uh, map rather smoothly. And then Dying Sun, of course, gets us a lot of extra um, additional projectiles and area. So it's if you're going to run a uh, Void Fletcher build, I probably wouldn't really want to do it without a Dying Sun because uh, it is a lot more fun to have that many more arrows. But um, I think it's perfectly viable to get a Void Fletcher and then uh, just a Death's Opus or just an Arborix and get away without Dying Sun for a while because this kind of damage is such stupid overkill for everything up to tier 15 that it shouldn't really matter. Um, you probably only really need to min-max once you're getting into the 16s and that sort of thing. And lastly for the uh, MTX in case you're wondering, I am using the new Viper bow here and I put the Corsair weapon effect on. It just ended up making a very nice sort of Warglaive of Azanoth look to it. Uh, even without it, it's kind of Warglaive and I do like the new bow, but once you chuck Corsair on it, it's got a real sort of spectral glow to it that I've thoroughly enjoyed. And then some Spectre Hood, Celestial Body Armor, Gloom Wings, in case you're wondering about the MTX setup. Uh, nothing else I really need to mention. Very generic um, Ranger tree, I think. The levels itself, just make sure you get some uh, good leveling uniques and uh, it should be pretty smooth to level because bow characters without leveling uniques really aren't that much fun. With leveling uniques, it's an absolute cruise and a lot of fun. So hopefully in the next video I have a, a bit more end game to show you, but so far it's an insane item that's uh, very fun to play with and I do recommend trying it out at some point. Thank you very much for watching guys. I hope you enjoyed the video and see you next time.